In accordance with Mass General Law, Chapter 22 of the Act of 2022, signed by <clears throat> Governor on February 15th, 2022, I announce that this meeting of the Select Board is being recorded by Hadley Media, the Select Board's office via Zoom, and ask if there's anyone present in the audience or on Zoom who is also recording this meeting. See anybody recording? Nobody else is recording. Let the minutes reflect that nobody else has indicated that they are recording this meeting. I call the meeting of July 20th to order at 6.02. We'll start with public comments. Are there any public comments? I have a public comment. Yes. Yes, we'll take any kind of public comments. Would you come and sit in the chair, please? <clears throat> introduce yourself, name and address. My name is Fred Wolder. I live on 31 Huntington Road. I have lived in Hadley all my life, all 81 years. And uh, I just like to express my opinion on the Green Energy Initiative that many towns are talking about. Green energy is about 18 to 20 percent of our power now comes from green energy. Uh, and I know some towns are trying to switch completely to green energy. In my opinion, this should be tabled indefinitely until someone can come in with a plan that is up and working to replace the other 80% of the energy to keep our household, households, our automobiles, our cities and towns and our police and everybody else running. Uh, a fast switch, like I noticed this happening to other towns, I don't think it's going to happen, it's not affordable. Um, so I think patience, time, it, it, it takes patience and time and not politics to get something like this up and running properly. Maybe there's a future, um, but right now, um, when it comes to knowing a little bit about geology, um, lithium batteries, the batteries made for lithium, um, our problems, both dispensing of them and creating them, Lithium is not something that is extremely abundant in this, in, on this earth. So, and, and a lot of places that do have a lot of lithium are being bought up by Chinese and other firms. So there's gonna be a problem down the road with lithium batteries that people aren't aware of. And I think you need to get as much input you can from not only politicians and people that are activists, but also from geologists, get some answers from them, Get some answers from people that are in the business and know what it takes to convert from gas, oil to green. It isn't as simple as it sounds in your future publishing. So I think that you need some patience and don't jump into anything and commit to something that you're going to regret until you know all the facts. And that's just that everybody's going to be <laughs> fine and happy with green energy because. Thank you. you have to think about what you're doing before you make the final decisions. Thank you very much. I'd just like to express that. That's fine. We will be talking about that later this evening. We're not going to vote on it or anything. We have a plan to carry forward with a forum. Okay. Thank, you. Thank you for speaking. And Any other? And hopefully you'll come to the forum. Yes. We'll try and get it well publicized. And David Hill is also difficult. Okay. David, you're on. Okay, thank you. Um, I just wanted to make a quick comment about the Valley Bike Share Program. I know this has previously been uh, voted down at least twice by the select board. And I just wanted to bring to people's attention that in a time of eight and nine percent uh, or eight and nine percent inflation, that we shouldn't be handing taxpayer funds over to any organization uh, to fund something like this. Uh, the argument has been made in the past repeatedly that it will benefit the businesses in town. Um, it, I've said it in the past, if that's the case, then why aren't the businesses coming together to chip in to pay for this? Why isn't the Amherst Area Chamber of Commerce uh, coming together to chip in to pay for all of us and the ongoing costs? The reality is there's no facts to support the claims and taxpayer money should not be used, especially in this time when we're going to be in a, some serious hurt 
you know, coming up with a, a budget for next year with all the increasing costs the town's seeing with uh, wages, energy, everything. Um, it, it now is not the time. So I just wanted to make that comment. Thank you. Thank you. Are there any other co comments? I see no one else with their hands raised. All right. Mm -hmm. Everybody zooming in. There's about uh, 17. So can you clarify that for me today or how that happened? Yeah, I thought we were able to zoom. The governor changed the order or the Senate and the House <clears throat> and voted to extend it to March. And then, yes, sure. Yeah. Yeah. And okay, then so the good. governor signed it. But after we posted this meeting, so the public hearing portions had to be in person. And so we created a hybrid meeting for the rest of the meeting. Okay. Thank you. Welcome. All right. We'll move on with the consent agenda. Jane, before you start, I yes. need to make a comment or a, an announcement. I have a past uh, client relationship with the person we are proposing to uh, make the alter an alternate electrical inspector. I have nothing going on with that person for probably five years. I see nothing happening in the future. I just want that out in public. Thank you. Did you check with the uh, ethics commission on that about voting on it? I did not. Are you going happy to not to vote? It's fine. So you'll stay on that one. Okay. Do we need to pull that out for Randy to be able yeah. to stay? Okay. All right. We're warrants AP two two five five S AP two two five five AP two three zero three AP two three zero three S Climate Change Committee appointment Kelly Ninton Catalina Arubla the alternate electrical inspector William Ehrman. Hadley Police Department Traffic Control Officer Appointments, William Pease, Kevin Gamash, Edward Baronis Jr., Christopher Laflamme, Tim Malinowski. Ambulance Oversight Committee Alternate, Bill Schwarzenfegler. Cultural Council, Lynn Bowmaster, Linda Castanova, Andrew Ganadic. Question for Police Department. Is are these um, officers that you're appointing for traffic control uh, being appointed to do the traffic on Route 9 when the project starts getting going? Yeah, they're civilians, not officers. They're civilian traffic control. Oh, stop signs? Yes? No? No, no, I mean, they'll be in uniform just like the rest of us, but their, their rank is not officer. Okay, thank you. And are they at the same rate of pay as our officers are? Yes, they make the same Okay, thank you. All right, may I have a motion? So mm -hmm. moved. Second. Motion by Joyce, second by Amy. Roll call vote, please, Jen. Yeah. Are we in person? We don't have to roll call vote. We don't have anybody in the room. Okay. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. All those opposed? All right. I'm abstain. Randy abstaining from you. You just need to abstain, Randy, from that one. He did. He okay. Just that one. Abstain from the electrical inspector. Thank and you. I for the rest of it. Thank you. <clears throat> All right. Car Cider House. Um, that is a public hearing that's supposed to take place at 6 15. However, there was a uh, situation with the budget presentation, and that item will not be taken up tonight. It will be brought back to y'all on August 3rd as another publicly posted uh, public hearing, and y'all will take up their uh, state farmer series point from it at that time. So we're not holding anything from down until August. You are not having another meeting as okay, a So they're not pouring anything from now until August. As I understand, they make cider, and there is no, there are no apples to make it. They're not even looking to do this until the fall. Okay. So we'll try to get it through as fast as we can, but we do have to follow the procedures of the town and, and, and the butters weren't good by question. Yeah, I just wanted to make sure that look at that glass that they were going to have to have any cases from now until August 3rd. I don't, I don't, no, they're not. Okay. Can you, can you let me just like to see, because I can't see, that I can change this to gallery view. Gallery <laughs> that would be great. But that kind of worries me. Thank you. 
That's not terrible. All right, we have a 6.30 appointment, but it's not 6.30. So if people are, we have to put that off. We have to wait. Um, Barry Roberts, it's not. All right, Mr. Roberts. Thank you for taking the time. Hear me? Uh, we are proposing to move a house from Amherst at 164 Sunset Avenue to 22 North Regal Street. This is basically in front of the nursing home on North Regal Street. You may have seen that we've excavated the driveway in the cellar hole to bring a house there. The move is finally, we've bounced around a number of times, uh, finally have a date from other source. August 9th, we will start at 10 o'clock. That is an ever source requirement. We have to move start at, start at 10 o'clock at Sunset Avenue. AM or, or PM? Yeah. PM. Yeah. Uh, it has to be an overnight move, so ever source disturbs the least number of clients possible. Uh, this is, uh, I've moved quite a few houses in my lifetime, and this is a fairly simple move, and there is not a lot of infrastructure in the way. So we will be traveling uh, on Sunset Avenue North, and then we'll be going down Mass Avenue to North Hadley Road, and then to North Maple Street. And all that is pretty clear. The, the uh, intersection of Rocky Hill Road and North Maple is the first really large conflict we have. We have other than there, uh, you know, cable TV, power, three phase power, uh, and uh, uh, fiber optic. There's service with UMass in the office park. So uh, all those groups are on board. Uh, I want to give a big shout out to uh, Lieutenant Cook. From the Hadley 3D, it was worked very hard for us and with us to help coordinate. And also, your uh, head of the DPW, temporary head of the DPW. No, very, it's permanent now. Permanent. Very cooperative. So, uh, we do have a lot of that we'd like to have signed. It's the rest of the Department of Transportation. They ask each town to recognize that we are, you have knowledge that we're going to do this through your town. And it's just a formality. We also have prepared flyers that we will distribute uh, the last week of July uh, to every household along the group, telling them about what's going to happen, when it's going to happen, and to contact myself or my assistant, Gail Flood, if there's any questions. We did this when we moved the house in Amherst, and I think I had two phone calls. It's pretty self explanatory. We think the move we say here till 6 a.m. We think we'll be done way ahead of that because of the uh, <clears throat> ease of the move. We think we may be done by two o'clock. And the police are on board with that being out at that time. Yes. Okay. Are there any other questions? How big a crowd do you expect when they're selling popcorn? That? How big a crowd do you expect to watch? It was interesting when we moved down Northampton Road, there was people out there in their lawn chairs and uh, you know having a real party watching the house go down. Yeah, I think so. There's not a lot of residences, you know, until <clears throat> we get up to uh, North Maple. Maybe the horses would be out watching us at the horse farm. Could be. Um, Mr. Roberts would like a letter from the select board to acknowledge we're aware of these program here. So we'll have Second. a motion by Joyce. Second by Amy. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. I'd have to abstain. Mr. Roberts is a client of mine. Okay. All those opposed? And one abstention. Did you say Thank you very much. I did. Good luck. Thank you. <laughs> All right, what else can we do here? Ambulance contract extension. Um, she's bank enable. She's bank enable. He's not here yet. 
if it can get on. Because well, I, I know that we've extended it for another two weeks so we can get a written contract. But let's see if we can see. come on early. We were way ahead of schedule, so yeah, six seven two and it says seven. You don't have to whisper. Can I do the town administrator report? Sure. Sure. Well, we're it's yeah. not very long though, I'm sorry. Well, it's fine. No, it I, don't, I don't have many <laughs> good right, ideas. So town sometimes. report, just to let you know, I did start a six week course uh, for cert continuing to get the certification for the mass certification of public purchasing officials. That's uh, that was about six weeks, a few hours a week that I'll be participating in that. Um, we get the in-house finance team met today, uh, which just as a reminder, that's our tax collector, treasurer, assessor, and myself, and our accountant is there from Lansing, just to discuss where we are at, at, going into 2000, 2000, uh, fiscal year 2023, as well as um, looking as we're waiting to get certified for free cash that won't happen probably till August and in September. Um, the accountants on working because we'll be working on that. Uh, so we, we're in good shape. The town is in good shape. I'm optimistic. Um, we will have special town meetings, so I'm optimistic that we'll have adequate cash. Uh, <coughs> as you know, we're finishing up negotiations, which I'll be reporting back to us in a couple weeks. So I think we're in really good shape. So just going to insert their time. special town meeting is October 27th. October 27th. Yes. Um, also, uh, we had a very productive kind of a debrief with the Young Men's Club, members of the Young Men's Club. And I know I see Lynn on here. Um, and she is on that planning committee. We just had a, a good meeting of all the departments that are impacted when we have large events. Um, I felt uh, that the communication has been is very good and touched on a few things to look at for the, next, the following events. Um, but we appreciate, obviously, the town appreciates all the work that the Young Men's Club does to support um, charities and things like that. So, very good relationship. Lynn, I don't know, uh, discussion. Lynn, I don't know if you have anything to add regarding that degree. No, I thought it was a really good meeting to, um, you know, work out any of the kinks. It was our first um, annual event. We hope to continue it moving forward. I know um, we talked about the 2023 date um, being set to accommodate other things that may be going on in the town at the time. And um, it was great to, to have all of the parties involved on the town side to, you know, to ensure a seamless execution for next year. So really appreciate the town support um, to, you know, to bring this event to life this year. I thought it was very well, you know, put together. We got a really nice response. Um, so we're looking forward to 2023. Thanks, Lynn. Are they going to be in charge of the parking signs? That's all I care. Yeah, we talked about that. Let's take care of it. Great. <laughs> also, um, I just, uh, Chief Spank I just want to, um, he wants to remind everybody that um, Coolings, the Hadley Public Library and the Senior Center are um, cooling centers right now. Uh, to the, the public library is open, uh, let's see, Monday and Friday, 2 to 7, Tuesday and Thursday, 10 to 5. Wednesday, 2 to 8, and Saturday, 10 to 3. The, the Senior Center is Monday through Friday, 9 a.m. to 4 p.m. And all, in the evening, residents, or anytime actually, residents have the option of visiting the Hampshire Mall located at 367 Russell Street during the hours of 10 a.m. to 9 p.m. Monday through Saturday. And in the event you are unable to find a pooling space and need relief after hours, the lobby of the public safety complex, 15 East Street, is available from nine to six. So I just want to share that. So that I'm, I'm sorry, Carolyn. The hours for the mall uh, need to be adjusted. They're not 10 to nine anymore. Um, I can email you the exact hours. It's 11 to seven Monday through uh, Saturday, and 11 to six on Sunday. Just I want to make sure people are clear on that. Great. I'm glad you were here to correct that. Thank you. Yep, no problem. Okay, that's all I have. How about the, uh, we can do legal counsel? Legal counsel? Yep, we can do legal counsel. All so right. if you remember, my charge from last week was to check references. And it actually got to the point where I stopped answering phone calls at one point because so many towns were so willing to give such a positive feedback. Um, if you remember the proposal that you are, are, want to go with is me, Tallinn, and Costa. So the references were glowing. I know Randy has input from one of his references. 
Um, so, Randy, do you want to tell us about your reference? Uh, what she said. So, <laughs> if, you, if you remember, you guys were looking for responsiveness, uh, litigation outcomes, uh, length of service to their town, uh, any surprises with billing. Those were the notes that I took. All of them were very positive. In fact, even when I asked, what would you want a law, a law firm to do differently than what this firm is doing, what would it be? And it basically was they're doing great. So I am very comfortable um, to tell you that the references are really good. All right. And I assume we would like these people to start tomorrow morning. Yeah. May yes. I have a motion? May we be ready? Motion to accept Mead and Calumet. Calumet. Costa. Costa. It begins tomorrow morning. It begins tomorrow morning. Okay. All right. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. All those opposed? All those abstaining? <coughs> Unanimous. All right. Um, Carolyn, do you want to talk about temporary staff position? Sure. I'm going to bring um, Jen on with this discussion. We're kind of going to tag team. Um, this is for the temporary staff position we're looking at, 4.8. Is that the one you want yes, to talk please. about right now? Um, yes, we have a position in town that is going to be out temporarily for about six to seven weeks. We do have a very good candidate um, that originally um, applied uh, for a, another position in town. So, um, Jen, do you want to share a little bit about this candidate and her experience? working for town government. Yes, she is. We can't, we can't hear you, Jen. Are you muted? You're not muted? Does Jennifer have to let her in? Um, she's in, but so where's Jen yeah. She's talking to Mike. Hey, Jen. We can't get. Can't, we can't hear her. Can't hear her. She needs to turn her volume up. It's not us. It's you, Jen, not us. Now yeah, we have that problem sometimes. Can you touch your microphone on the bottom right? Is it working? No, it's not working apparently. <laughs> so you want to call back on the telephone then? That's up. I mean, I can I can talk with Jen if you want to get on for the next conversation that we are both going to share. But I'll I'll uh, I'll finish up this. Um, so you do have uh, Janet, but goes by Jane with a Y. Um, I I do have the resume uploaded into right the uploaded mm -hmm. the resume. Yeah. So you, if you just even look at her, her position for your extensive position, I've met with her. Jen, this Jane has met with her as well. Um, I think she's a really good fit. She recognizes that's temporary, but she pretty much could walk into that position and she'll be, um, I don't think we'll need a whole lot of orientation, but uh, that employee will be meeting with her beginning this week and the next couple of weeks during the week just to get her acclimated for that transition. So I am looking for authorization to hire a temporary. Or as I'm confused here, what position are we talking about? Um, I'm going to keep the that, that person's yeah. asked that I keep that confidential if that's okay. You did get letters in your email saying it's confidential. Huh? Oh, <laughs> may I have a motion, please? So moved. A second, second. All those in favor, aye. aye. Oh, God, yes. All those opposed. <laughs> Unanimous. Thank you. <laughs> All right. She's the, <laughs> the ambulance contract extension, please. We have four minutes. He's got I mean, he's right there, he's right know, there but I, I mean, see. he's got four minutes. That's enough. Yeah, right. the ambulance contract is going to be plus four because we didn't have the extended support. Can, I, can you just come up here just so we can make sure we can hear you? Hey, so, you sit in the hot chair. You're going to get on yeah, so we have, uh, we're pushing the ambulance contract for the next because oversight committee hasn't had a chance to review uh, the two amendments to it. Uh, so we just got the documentation from Fort Hampton yesterday. Uh, it was signed today by the town administrator. So I'll get that info out. Cut off the press so I can have one of those. And I'll email them to you. There's just two two changes that go to uh, town administrator Joyce and 
uh, Molly, by all means. Uh, we also have Barb, who's away, Barb O'Connor. She's on the oversight committee, and we have an alternate as well. And Amy Klein will also be okay. So we'll get that information back so you can go through the line. On the third? Uh, yeah, I, I could get out that Google. I could do that Google. I think you can open it yeah, I mean, I'll give you my date. I'll just give you my date. Otherwise, I think after two weeks, we can go back to Zoom in so I may be able to just zoom in on the meeting. So, an email was also sent out uh, prior to the first with, so we are covered under the current contract. He, uh, Michael Walker, the president of Action, has agreed to all the terms and the existing contract. So, that's uh, was requested by the town. Excellent. Thank you. Thank you, Mike. Is it six thirty? Uh, Not quite. Two minutes. Mm -hmm. And I'm sorry, it's a, it's a legal double trick, so you have to wait till six thirty. We just everybody take a deep breath. On what? Probably by the time the forms have got settled, like you, said, you could all come up and sit at this table. The ambush chamber of commerce. Does everybody know about getting here? I mean, it's a little bit of a little bit of a little bit is on little <laughs> Gray is on Zoom. They're both here. Uh, so, Fun Hub, oh wait, y'all set me up for chat. <laughs> All right. Another minute. They could introduce themselves. <laughs> they could introduce themselves. My name is Amit Patel. I'm Prakash Patel. Fun Hub Patel. Nick Patel. Thank you. I'm going to mediate. Y'all can't vote before 6 30. You have to call the public hearing for the public comments. So, okay. so it's a trampoline park that's going to come into the mall, in the Venture <clears throat> Mall, and look and open the property within a month or two in that no time frame. Um, we're working with the chief to get everything out of the fires. So, that, that's the <clears throat> one of the same days everything's been working out. Uh, we just have one contractor left to come and put the sprinklers on to that before we can have a final repair. Is this going to be where the um, media play used to be? The, the, the old Ottawa? The old park. Yeah, old park. Oh, yeah. So, like, yeah. way before that. Sorry, media play is like 90s. <laughs> Back in the day, it was media play. You're right. <laughs> <laughs> are, are we doing. Um, are you already have a wine and malt license? No. No. That's what they're applying That's what they're here for. Okay. How many do we have available? This is it. It's our last one. Will people go to drink and get a trampoline? No, no, there'll be no food or drinks allowed. Okay. Yeah. yeah, it says they'll be serving beer and wine to adults that will need a wristband and, and will not be allowed. <laughs> Is there going to be anything there besides trampolines for entertainment purposes? Yes, uh, we are called Fun Hub Action Park. We have our trampoline is actually a short section, a quarter of one meter. Uh, then we will have bumper cars, uh, little cars that fit each other and the spin, that kind of cars. We have a climbing structure. Uh, the trampoline uh, platform will have dodgeball, so they throw softballs at each other kids. Um, then we have a uh, kids' play structure like uh, we used to see in uh, McDonald's, but mm -hmm. it's a big, it's a three, uh, three and a half level play structure for kids. So they can go in there. You have Ninja Warrior course. Ninja Warrior yes. course. That's exciting. <laughs> have, have you done this elsewhere, or is this your first this attempt? This is our at first one. Is it modeled after any other business? Uh, uh, yes, we have a friend in the business, and uh, he has two successful ones. And this is more just after this. And where is he located? Uh, he's in Pennsylvania and uh, New Jersey. And is that set up the way you would like to be, i.e., on hub and wine and 
wine and beer over here? Do they have alcohol at their well, places? Yeah, I have a uh, true paper here. I did bring it to the Sure, sure. So, this will show a setup that what we have. And the one in the uh, malt will only be where the chairs are located. And right across the chairs, that's our serving area. And the uh, wine and malt will only be served uh, to, to veterans that have a uh, band, the extension of a red band. Once they get their red band, they will not be allowed on entry. <clears throat> so you basically see that for parents who might be this super parents who just don't want it. We've uh, done so much uh, research, we've uh, visited so many parks, and we see parents get bored. They're just sitting there on their cell phones. Yep. And this way, you get a little show show going on with the parents. I mean, the place across the way, you can drink and bowl at the same time. And throw yeah. axes. And throw yeah, axes. Yeah, yeah. So, <laughs> it's slightly more responsible. They're coming next week with their um, arcade and their automatic amusements, which is 25 automatic music games that yeah, they'll apply for. Yes. Um, I think it's the time you get it worked out for them to go on together. But will it be in the same space? Yes, it'll be in the same place. Yeah. Okay. Anything from police and fire on this? Anything from police or fire on this? As long as, uh, as long as nobody drinks and then drives the bumper cars on the trampolines, <laughs> where are the bumper cars on this picture? Uh, you know, uh, bumper cars are towards the entrance, it's not in the picture. Okay. So the bumper cars would be. Here. Look, yeah, bumper cars here, and we have a VR right next to it. So bumper cars, this is the entrance. Yeah. So we have bumper cars here and a VR here. What's a VO? Uh, VR, VR is a virtual, uh, virtual, virtual reality game. game. Oh, so they were a uh, helmet. Helmet. Okay. That's it. Okay. And then we're old. My kids are old. Oh, the bumper cars are just pretty small. It's 24 feet by 24 feet. It's not. And, and what is going to separate that from the rest of the uh, place so that somebody can't make it and go up yeah. onto the yeah. 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 place structure itself? The bunker has its own railings, and then we're going to have another set of railings for crowd control outside of that. So it's going to have like it's two sets of railings. Okay. And uh, I have one last question How are you going to make certain that the people with the red bands don't go out onto the entertainment section after they've started drinking? Uh, we have uh, employees, there'll be uh, employees at each station. <coughs> so, uh, they have to check the bands before they get on their right. So all the riders will have different bands. We have four different packages, so four different colored bands will be there. Once they see a red, they will not be allowed on any ride. And only people with bands are allowed on rides. So they will have a band they can't get in. Not to ask them to check in Tom and then to the bankers. <coughs> all right. And he is here. Okay. Tommy, can you unmute and give your feedback about Club Hub, please? I'm sorry, Jennifer, you were asking for me, right? No, but we'd love to hear from you too, Lynn. Uh, <laughs> I'm sorry about that. But it's okay. Uh, Go ahead. <laughs> Yeah, no, I was just going to say we're really excited about this edition. I think that this offers um, a really nice complement to the existing uh, restaurants and entertainment mix that we have going on. Um, and I'm not knocking any other prior uses, but I think that um, what Fun Hub is doing, diversifying um, and accommodating all ages, um, including this, um, this edition with, uh, you know, an ancillary use of, of you know, the malt and liquor license is, is really gonna keep people engaged and really support their, um, their efforts to keep people in there longer and, um, you know, diversify their mix to, to, you know, engage with our customers more. So I, the mall is very supportive of this addition um, to, to their uh, ancillary use. Okay, probably gonna speak. Yes, Tommy's going to speak. Hi, Tommy. Thank you, Lynn. Hey, how you doing? How's everybody? Good. Good. As far as uh, once we get the CO to them, you know, once their uh, letter of completion is done and we meet all the safety with it, I mean, I really don't have a say as far as the uh, alcohol goes. Just hope they can enforce that ban. Yeah, 
I just had a random question. Is it okay that there's only one entrance and one exit? Does there have to be more than one? Oh, that's not me. That's Tony and Mike. I'm, I'm alcohol. <laughs> <laughs> I license the alcohol, but I don't know the answer to that. I'm sorry, Ms. Fire first. There's actually multiple exits out there. There's one from the mall as well. Just be ready to explore. <clears throat> Okay, I don't know if you want to amend that on here. Well, I guess this is just for the liquor license. So. Okay. Are there any other questions? We have a motion. I'll make a motion to grant the malted wine liquor license to Fun Hub and any other license. That's it. For tonight, that is it. Okay. Second. Motion by George, second by Amy. All those in favor? Aye. 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 All those opposed? All abstentions unanimous. Thank you. Thank you. Good luck. Good luck, gentlemen. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <coughs> you guys are welcome to keep it, but if you oh, don't I need it, I'll you you want one. I actually, yeah, I actually you do? Okay, copy. sure. <laughs> All right. So, so all right, we've got the uh, Amherst Chamber of Commerce. I'm just letting you know. Yeah, okay. In five minutes. Well, she's here. She's on. Oh, oh she's on. Thank you. All right, <laughs> if Claudia's here, let's go with the Amherst Chamber of Commerce. Hello there. Oh. Welcome. Hi there. Hi, thank you for having me. I wanted to just introduce and reintroduce the chamber. Um, you know, it's been... I haven't really come before the select board. I know a lot of our key stakeholders have um, as part of the community in Hadley. So I just kind of, I really, I talked to Jane. I had a beautiful tour of the space you're all in that are, that are not remote. And uh, so I just want to thank you for having me tonight. Introduce myself. I've been the executive director of the chamber for the past four years. I've raised my family here, um, including two young adults that are now young adults. Um, and our family has a business in Amherst. So clearly I have a, a, a long personal stake in the success and recovery of our region. Um, and I know personally that just because I live in Amherst, the amenities, the agriculture, the food, so much in Hadley has been and continues to be a, a huge part of the quality of life here. Um, and it's completely intertwined in all of our memories of raising a family here. And similarly, uh, it's as important to our chamber. So I just wanted to share just briefly, you know, obviously the chamber, our Amherst Area Chamber of Commerce mission is to create, maintain, promote a vital thriving business climate throughout the Amherst area, and hopefully to initiate support the civic, educational, recreational, economic well-being of the Amherst area. And of course, we've been put to the test these last two years. Um, but the Amherst area has included our area towns for more than 30 years, and over 15, and that includes Hadley, and over 15% of our businesses are represented by owners in Hadley. Some of our key stakeholders spoke tonight, like Barry and Lynn, who are on our board. Um, from day one, uh, that has always been a part of my vision, bringing that to the chamber, that we are really representative of the area that we say we're representing. And so that began with our leadership, uh, you know, our, our board members, our chamber champions, our committee members, our area partners. Um, they are really a healthy representation of our Amherst, Hadley, and area town. So we're really committed to that. And we're working, we're also committed to working together with you. And um, the, the pandemic really uh, proved that out. We worked with Hadley businesses to complete their MGCC, Valley CDC and CB, CDBG grants, lots of acronyms. Um, we supported folks helping them with their PPP, supported them with PPE, provided winter micro grants. Uh, we, we were open to supporting all businesses, not just members. Uh, we created a beautiful tourism campaign, Greater Amherst Area Campaign, and that is a region-wide tourism effort uh, that is greateramherst.com, and it's very popular on Instagram. And that's in addition to our partnership with our Regional Tourism Council. That is a partnership with East Hampton and Northampton Chambers, and that's visithampshirecounty.com. And so that's really been, um, you know, a real powerful force behind how we've been wanting to, how we're looking at recovery is rebuilding our tourism. Uh, so we've been really, you know, out there filling grants and uh, been able to 
basically built big, we actually received one of the largest grants for tourism um, and culture, you know, and destination marketing. So it's really been a gift and an honor to be able to share all that Amherst area has to offer. And that, and Hadley is definitely um, part of what really inspired our thinking, the true farm to table dining, uh, the cultural destination here and the great outdoors. Um, those are some of our key tenants and targets um, for this project. And, and it's not just a project, it's something that's enduring. Uh, we all know it, um, but we're here to help promote it. And so from the outdoor enthusiast to the global diner, we know we have it right here. Uh, and we have taken great pride in this project. And we also want all of our local communities and towns and select boards um, and, and, and certainly our members and community members to take great pride in it too, because we're really telling your story. Uh, so we are on Greater Amherst on Instagram, as I mentioned, uh, but we're also taking a really, we've taken a really great um, and much greater interest also since I've been um, at the helm to truly move our Hadley businesses and have and move our signature events. And uh, one of our largest signature event has been moved to Hadley in the last several years. And even with the pandemic, it's seen its greatest success here in Hadley. So we want to partner with our other local events, the Hadley events, such as the Asparagus Festival, such as Young Men's Club. Um, so we want to help promote them. We want them to be safe, but we also want to help promote them. Uh, so we're here to say, seek us out to help support and spread the word. And that's what we're here to do. We want to, again, that we know that that drives the local economy and we want uh, to. So anytime that we can showcase our members and our, our local community, uh, we want that opportunity. We can't support them all, but we can try in myriad ways. Support comes in so many ways. We are small but mighty. I'm going to remind you, I am a team, two and a half. <laughs> our only income is through membership and sponsorship. Uh, our key events obviously help us keep moving forward so that we can, uh, that helps us help you and help our businesses. So, uh, you know, as a chamber in, in, in a generic form, we're like no other, like any other chamber. Our, our key ways to support our businesses are member to member support and, and we act as a referral network. We create networking events. We're here to market and promote our businesses. Um, we have an amazing website. Uh, we have webinars and workshops. We have personal and professional development opportunities, programming and events, government affairs and policy and advocacy, which I'll talk about. And of course, um, the tourism piece that I mentioned. So those are the basic ways that we really partner. And a lot of folks don't know that our office, which is located at 35 South Pleasant Street in Amherst is also a visitor information center. So we see visitors every day and we are out there. We created the, you know, we have the Visit Hampshire County Guide, which is created as part of that regional tourism council. That is well, Hadley is well represented and, and proudly so. so we're constantly trying to get people to come here, to stay here. We promote days in Hadley, a day in Amherst, a day, you know, a day in the area to keep people excited about uh, not only being here, but also coming back. Uh, and, and though the pandemic was as, as brutal as, as any, anything I've ever experienced, uh, it had a couple silver linings and that was to allow us to have a greater platform for the voice of Western Mass. Our college community was absolutely hit twice as hard as almost any other community. And we have a much stronger voice at the table with our state representatives and our town municipality staff. Uh, Carolyn, her staff, uh, you guys have been incredibly open and we've been really, one, you know, we have a wonderful uh, communication. I'd like to keep that going. So again, you know, just a, a way to introduce ourselves and let you know that, you know, this is important to us. Um, you know, recently in Amherst, we were able to leverage some of their ARPA funding to create an economic development analyst position. And that is, again, to help the town a better position for success and recovery, uh, beginning with just the basic permitting processing and how to start a business. We've seen an enormous upkeep, uptick in the interest in entrepreneurs wanting to start a business. So um, that has already taken effect and we believe we can take our learnings and provide support for our other area towns. And that is the goal. Um, so again, any way that we can all overlap, I know that's been, um, you know, all of us are working really hard to make that an easy process for businesses. And we know that that's the first step and that's their first uh, you know, uh, vision and uh, experience with our local towns. And we want them to be able to say they had a good experience and, and what are those barriers in that process so we can look at those barriers and help move them along. Uh, and we know we all have them, but how can we help um, be a force for making those easier? Uh, I also invite you the select board and, and any member who's listening uh, to sign up for our newsletter. If you're not already, already doing so, 
we are at amherstarea.com. And when you do open our website, it will provide you the option to subscribe. Um, so, cause you know, we, we do believe when we're all working together, we can envision, envision a, greater, um, a greater area. And partnership has proven its weight in gold throughout the pandemic. Uh, again, our conversations um, with, with all of our area partners, whether it's uh, tourism partners, whether it's, uh, you know, the, the colleges who kept us so informed, they were incredible partners throughout this, you know, pandemic. Um, you know, and to David Phil's earlier comment, something like the bike share, what are those benefits? You know, you know, how would they affect Hadley? That's something we'd be happy to somehow review and get involved with. You know, could we make that funding possible? Maybe we could help finding find other funding. Could we do it ourselves? Probably not. But again, we're not, we don't have a big budget, but we 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 have you know, we, our arms are outstretched, we have great partners, um, there's great funding out there, and we would love to be able to help support something like that. Um, you know, in, in times of great, you know, it's all about keeping doors open. Uh, recently when the Hadley was developing and looking at the ban on plastic bags, the climate committee reached out. We then reached out to our Hadley businesses and were able to do that. And I was able to send some of that feedback over to the climate committee. So again, we're just here to, you know, open those doors to conversation and, and, to be in the best interest of our, our businesses and for the best possible viability of our community. So we know the Mass DOT project is coming. We are starting to try to send that information to our Hadley businesses too. So when there are updates, please keep those coming. Um, we're following, uh, you know, so just keep that in mind. I know that we can always do better. So we're always looking for feedback. Um, I, you know, we wanna work with you. And uh, I think that's it. I just want to thank you for your time. I appreciate all the work that's done here on behalf of Hadley. And I am here in full support and open to doing more. Thank you, Claudia. Does anyone have any questions for Claudia? Appreciate you coming and sharing with us tonight. Thank you for the invitation. You're certainly welcome. Um, I see Nathan here. Do we want to go with the film permit? Hi, right, can you move up here, please? Thank you. Thank you. Um, so yeah, my name is uh, Nathan Harrison. I'm an assistant location manager working on a film. Um, the, the title or the working title is Janet Planet. Um, it's from a studio called Big Trump Four. It's um, being directed by a woman, um, Ann Baker, the playwright of some announced on camera. Uh, Arena is in Amherst, Massachusetts, um, and this is her first film. Um, and we would like to film. Um, for, well, today was our first day of filming. Not had it, of course, but can leverage. Um, just why I'm not in my best business to hire. Um, but uh, we'd like to film for two days in uh, next week. Um, and I submitted a, a permit application. Um, I hope we'll have, and um, I, I'm happy to go through it with the details, but um, just wanted to present that to you, see if you have any questions, and um, hope to um, you know, get things in place. Um, on the first day of filming is uh, the third of them. So I um, just wanted to make sure to satisfy everyone. And where is that going to be filmed? Um, so there's uh, three different locations. On the third, we're in two spots. Um, Hadley. The first is the Hampshire Mall. Uh, we're filming first outside the Hampshire Mall, adjacent to Penny, and then go indoors. Um, then later in the afternoon, we are going to be doing some driving shots down South Maple Street. Um, we requested a, a road closure um, of that section of North Maple. Um, Wait, and north or south? Oh God, south. Which between the mall and the four-way stop or the four-way stop south? So it's the, it's the section between Mill Valley Road and Luke Bridge. Okay, okay. that's the south. Um, yeah. And I, I, um, I work with Lieutenant Cook, I believe. He's here. He's there. Good to meet you in person. Um, uh, so we work in consultation <clears throat> to select um, that section of road um, that, that would, would have the sort of most local 
plan and have even more details about that plan. Um, and, and figure out how to do that. And then, so that's the first day. The second day is on the morning of the 15th of August. And that is at the Creamy Delights ice cream uh, stand. Um, that's. Uh, They're going to open specially for you if in the morning, right? Uh, yeah, I yeah, okay. kind of got, you know, got them out for, for that day. Um, and that's also the day that we'll, we'll have not quite a road closure, but we'll, what we call intermittent traffic control, where we're just holding traffic for a period of time and then letting it pass. Um, and I'm also happy to go into detail. Are there any questions? The, if I remember correctly from reading your uh, permit application, you want to do South Maple Street to driving in at five o'clock in the afternoon. Is that somewhere around that time? Is that right? So we have, we think that that shot we can do fairly quickly. It will take about an hour to actually do, actually film the session. We'd like to have our officers kind of ready to go um, for a window of 5 p.m. to 9 p.m. And then it worked the rest of the day and dial them at precisely uh, been in you know, place. We would have them in place for that period because I said about an hour. Uh, but yeah, it is not window of 5 p.m. to 9 p.m. That's a busy commuter time yeah. on that road. Have you considered? In terms of other farm roads that you might look at, um, we we have um, uh, that is that section of South Maple is certainly our favorite. Um, and if you were to, well, I would wire us somewhere else. And I, well, if I looked up at Stockbridge or Knightley Road, they had some very nice Hadley farmland. Okay. Um, I mean, I'm sure it can be done there, but just thinking of the inconvenience and the number of people who use that road. Sure. Coming and going. Um, certainly, and, and I would, um, you know, I would defer to you on that. I mean, we, we were also looking. Yeah, there are other sections we could use, like perhaps East Hadley Road. Um, if, if, if that were required of us, we, we can make that work. But um, it's certainly our hope to make that section um, of South Maple Street work. Just in scouting, working with the director, that was the point. So when the road is closed or for shooting, will it be what you call intermittent, like Lawrence Plain, or it will be nobody travels through here while we're shooting? No, it would be no one travels through while we're shooting. Um, Lieutenant Cook, I believe, had some notion to divert traffic and felt that that section would, would be fairly, um, would be a bit more manageable than other sections. Okay. Um, well, I defer to him. He's yeah, how, do our, how do our safety officials feel about this? We don't have any interest in changing their plans. We've seen their plan from top to bottom, and we can handle what it is that they want to do. Hey, so if I just ask a question. Yeah. Um, where would the closure be for South Maple? The only reason I'm asking is, is I'd like to talk with Justin from Balthazar to make sure that he's that's not going to be too big nice. It's Mill Valley. It's, it's further south. Mill Valley to Moody Bridge, so it's not affecting. No, but sometimes if they're wanting to put people or I don't think I just want to. I just want to communicate that with all the side. It should be after hours for them. Yeah. And so, what you would divert traffic down Mill Valley to Amherst and around to whatever mm -hmm. it's called on the other end of Moody Bridge Road in Amherst. I don't recall what it is, but that's what you're. I mean, that seems like it would make sense. That's why I would think that is just. It's just a square, okay. yeah. Okay. And if it rains, what happens? Um, if it rains, then we probably just film the scene in rain. Okay. Um, <laughs> alternatively, we might sort of call the whole thing off and try to schedule it for a different day. Okay. But we would, of course, because there's so many pieces, um, yeah. I feel like we would, we would try to snake here. Yeah, and I don't I don't know who can answer this question, but if they were to change the day, do they have to come back to us to get permission for a different day, or are we just going to? I actually would like to ask you to give permission to Carolyn and Chief Mason to approve their alternate day. 
as part of the field permit. Um, that way they don't have to leave, don't leave the first or the third. So that would give them a little bit more flexibility. Because you've already seen the plan, it would just be the date would change. But as long as you allow Carolyn and Sonia to share two phase one, I think that would be adequate. Um, okay. Any other questions? Yeah, so for the mall itself, um, for the exterior, we're filming, um, like I say, that section of Jason Kenny. Um, we were going to have some officers with us on mall property just to help divert um, mall customers around our parking lot. We're, we're filming a scene in a parking lot, so we get On the north face or the west face? It's sort of south. South, west. southwest. Okay. Yeah. Um, there is a bus, a city bus that travels right in front of there. Um, right. And our plan there is to just hold our work when the bus comes through, not divert the bus. Um, we just felt that would be difficult to organize and it's not really necessary for us. So we think we could keep out from normal cars um, and then just hold the bus travels mm -hmm. and then we're at film the bus. Um, so you is also on if you have any questions. Yeah. Lynn may have some answers for inside for you, Mike. Or if anyone yeah, has any questions for this. Okay. And then inside, we're filming one scene inside a sort of abandoned store, like it's like a vacant shop. We're, so it's not a bookstore, we're setting it up in the bookstore. And then we are through, we're still sorting this out with the management of the mall, I believe. Okay. But we may um, basically just have lunch in the mall. I think, we're, I think they told us we can't do it in the food court, so we may find another vacant space to do it or um, something along those lines. Lynn, do you have anything you want to add? Um, I would just say, you know, we met with the, um, you know, emergency response teams yesterday separately um, to just go over preliminarily the layout, um, the impact to mall traffic to make sure that um, emergency services had uh, a means to get on and off property for whatever reason. And um, we agree with the uh, way that they're staging the interior ring road to accommodate the PBTA traffic because we don't want to reroute that or, or mitigate that. Um, and, and he's right, we are still working through some of the details on the in-mall um, portions of their filming um, and their, their crew for, you know, catering services and what have you. Um, but we're, we're comfortable with the, the plans that we have presented so far. Um, and we've provided spec sheets on their equipment um, to make sure that building and fire are comfortable with what, um, you know, with what equipment will be on site uh, the day of the shooting at the for the filming at the mall. Um, and on the line, on the note of um, emergency vehicles, um, whenever we're working in the road, um, you know, of course, we have police with us who can help communicate, but we always yield to emergency vehicles if they get through. Um, so that's for that. So. Right. The the most impact for for us is the um. The, there are two lots dedicated to. Um, you know, JC Penney um, patrons and employees, those two lots, um, the interior portions of those lots where the parking fields are, are what would be partitioned off for the, the filming portion, but not anything to do with the interior or um, inner or outer ring roads, with the exception of saw horses um, to stop traffic going on the interior portion where the bus travels. And that will be moved whenever the um, the bus is making its way on site, so that they can accommodate um, onloading and offloading. Any other questions? What do we need to do? Is it going to make a motion to approve the request for the Janet Planet film permit and the authorization to? and the chief of police to provide all of the 
Okay. May I have a motion? So moved. Second. Motion by Joyce, second by Amy. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstain? Unanimous. Are you looking for extras? I'm sure the town would provide a lot. For you. Um, I can, uh, I can see what I can do. <laughs> You're gonna get them whether you want them or not. Yeah, they will be there. Trust me. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Good luck. Right. Thank you. We'll look for you at the academy. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> yeah. All right. Uh, Hadley Media Personnel Changes. Chad, can we hear you? I don't know. Can you hear me now? Yes. Yeah. Oh, well, good. I'll you start. If I need to chime in, I can do that. Okay. Uh, both Drew Hutchison and John Harrison have both put in their resignations, uh, which is the entire Hadley Media Department. So we are currently filling those positions, but there are going to be some temporary pauses and some programming. We may need to cut down to more of a bare bones program for a little while. Although we do already have a few promising leads on replacements and people that are interested in the positions. So we okay. need the authorization to rehire those positions. Okay, a motion, motion to rehire. Rehire media, Hadley media personnel. Second. Motion by Joyce, second by Amy. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstain? Unanimous. So we're just asking all of the viewers to have patience. There may be some <clears throat> quiet moments on Hadley media. Um, job. The other additional thing I need to ask is uh, we will, John will continue to help us and support us as much as he can um, in the next few weeks. So we'll be able to update that. Um, but John will still be working and trying to help us do this for all the meetings. That's the biggest concern. We cover all of those meetings that I have to cover. All right, talking about hiring, let's move right down to 5.6, the hiring process been pointed out to me that I hold here, the hiring practice guide, which was last updated on November 3rd, 2004. We did not have a human resource department at that point. And there are different things that just need this committee to relook at it. So I need the subcommittee of the select board to review the hiring practice guidelines. Anybody willing to volunteer? And if you want to wait until Molly's attending, I don't know if you want to wait. Well, we can wait until, yeah. I, I, I just don't have time. I just get way too many other things going on. Yeah, I think it's a short process, but probably one day. Or... Shouldn't it be part of our personnel policy? The town yeah. personnel policy? Well, let's give it to Jen to look at and then bring it back to the select board. That it should be in the handbook how uh, we hire. How about if Jen goes through it, then she gives every one of us her version and then we all look at it individually and make notes about it and then reconvene and try to make a whole lot of it. Sounds like a plan. I can do that. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you for jumping Bill, did, right in. Uh, Bill, did you have anything with regards to that? You're just coming down early. I just saw Bill. I didn't know if he was, oh. he was making a comment. No, I think he's next if he's here. Okay. Affordable housing inventory review, Bill. All right. Uh, may I share my screen? Please. What? We have uh, to go over is what is in your, uh, it was loaded to board docs, I believe, but uh, if I could just get into screen sharing. You should have access already. Host disabled participant screen sharing. It's because I don't like you in particular. <laughs> I know, it's personal. Yeah, try, try it now. I forgot that I had locked down the meeting so bad. Okay. There we go. Uh, so, uh, yeah, let's see. 
Is it still in gallery view? Yeah. It is on gallery view. It's only the people who have a camera on. So um, the first screen that is up is the official Department of Housing and Community Development subsidized housing inventory for the town of Hadley. Um, with uh, 277 subsidized units, um, which puts us at a 12.59% uh, subsidized housing. That's good. It's greater than 10%, which means that we are not vulnerable to a, an unfriendly Chapter 40B comprehensive permit. I do want you to note that on the official census, and I literally got this from DHCD uh, last week, they're using the 2010 housing units. Um, the census 2020 doesn't have that exact number, year-round housing units, doesn't have that term, but they have something called households. So I massaged the numbers a little bit. It changes uh, the statistics very slightly. The two things I want to call your attention to are there is one project uh, ready to come off the, uh, the inventory in uh, less than a year. It's 25 units at Mountain View. And uh, there are 80 units that are ready to come off the inventory in 10 years. So what does that do for us? Um, can't I get this where I want it to be? Hmm. Okay, let me see. I'm not sure why this, can you see this full screen or is it blocked by? We can see it, Bill. Okay. Okay. Um, again, you have this in board docs. You can look at it at your leisure. Um, I just wanna highlight that uh, if, we fall below 10% of affordable housing, we are exposed to a chapter 40B comprehensive permit application. Uh, those go to the zoning board of appeals. They do not go to town meeting. So for example, a project came in uh, a couple of a year and a half ago to rezone some property between uh, Middle Street and East Street to um, senior housing. And that had to go to town meeting and it was unsuccessful at town meeting. Uh, had that been a comprehensive permit and had we been below 10% of affordable housing stock, that would have proceeded without regard to town meeting. So where we stand in the moment is a good place. We have the 12.59%. If you adjust for 2020 census with some a few more houses, it goes from 12.59 uh, down to 12.28. And I have thrown in two items that are in the short run. Uh, the Mountain View uh, leaving, uh, potentially leaving in March and the Econo Lodge potentially being converted in. So if we do not, except the Cano Lodge and lose Mountain View, we go from 12.9 to 11.45 or 11.17, still not bad. If we uh, split the difference, lose Mountain View, add a Cano Lodge, we go up a bit. If we keep a Cano Lodge, if we get a Cano Lodge and keep Mountain View on the census, we're really good. We're around 14.8% uh, using the 2010 numbers. 14.45% in the 2020 numbers. So that's the sooner. Um, we're, we're in an okay position, whatever we do with additional affordable housing in the short run. But it is not too early to talk about 10 years down the road. And that's what the planning board gets the big bucks to think about. <clears throat> If we lose Winfield in 2032, um, a direct hit of negative 80 units would put us at 8.73%. Um, if we also did not have Mountain View, we're down to 7.62%. 
And if we were able to keep both Mountain View and at O'Connell Lodge, we would just be holding on at a hair over 10.9%. So I'm not advocating for or against anything. I just wanted to make sure that the select board knew that there is some volatility in the affordable housing stock. And every program that I have been to, whether with the Housing and Economic Development Subcommittee, the Affordable Housing Trust Fund, people who have come into the planning board say that um, it is much better to keep already built affordable housing on the inventory. And it's a lot of work to, to catch up if you lose things that are already on the inventory. So going forward, uh, for your consideration, there is uh, funding in the Community Preservation Act. There's a housing set aside. There is also uh, somewhere in the neighborhood of $300,000 in the Affordable Housing Trust Fund. So there are perhaps certain strategies that we can look at that will not affect the tax rate. But uh, I do want to impress upon all of you that um, March of 2023 is going to be here before we know it. And really, we already opened the uh, town meeting warrant for the fall town meeting. Um, time is passing quickly. Uh, negotiating something on the scale of keeping windfields on the inventory is a multi-year process, I am sure. I know that Northampton has done something similar. Amherst has done something similar to preserve existing affordable housing stock. It can be done, but um, I just want to impress upon everyone that actually in this case, it's your board that has to do it. We don't have the authority either as the affordable housing trustees or um, uh, the, afford the housing and economic development committee. We don't have the authority to, to make a deal on the part of the town. Uh, you have that. Um, I would uh, suggest in the short run that you charge the town administrator with exploring our options here and we're happy to work with her, but um, as I said, time, time is going to pass quickly and it seems to move faster as we get closer to the deadlines. And we do want to stay above 10%. And uh, just in case the state ever thought of changing the rules to say the 10% isn't enough. I know Joseph Grodner keeps on telling me that we're over, uh, overthinking this and that some communities have way less than 10%. But honestly, it doesn't matter what Plainfield has. Uh, developers are probably not interested in putting in affordable housing in Plainfield, even if they may have less than 1% currently affordable. We're in a position where uh, we're very attractive for developers. We have the shopping, we have the proximity to the schools, we have um, public transit. Um, we need to make sure we don't have a target on our back. And that's all I have, any questions? Yeah, could you go again and be a little more explicit about what happens when we get, under, if we get under 10%? If we get under 10%, a developer, it could be any developer, could uh, say that I would like to put in an affordable housing development. And I would therefore like to override your zoning to allow more than one lot per dwelling, one dwelling per lot. Um, I would like to put it perhaps in the industrial district where new housing is not allowed under the current rules. And I want to do it on a parcel of my choosing, which may be an inexpensive one. Could be something off of Mill Valley Road, could be something off of North Maple Street. And under the authority of Chapter 40B of the state law, I would like to waive all 
zoning and other municipal regulations that stand in the way of my doing what I want, where I want. Also. So, so someone could put in an apartment building? Yeah. Could put in an apartment building, perhaps where the, uh, the five college library was proposed. Um, perhaps, uh, you know, somewhere off of uh, Rocky Hill Road. Um, but yes, yeah, someone, someone could come in and put up an apartment building and the little, the dark secret of this is that as long as a certain percentage of the units are affordable, and I think it is between 25 and 30%, I may be wrong on that, but as long as a percentage are affordable, uh, they can put in as many as they want and rent the others at market rate. So that's, um, that's very tempting to a developer to be able to put up an apartment complex in the shadow of UMass um, and keep a percentage of it as affordable, get credit for putting them all in as affordable, and we have a large apartment complex. That so, is, I have no reason to believe that's looming, but that is a possibility. Um, so you had indicated that in uh, 2032, we'll have 80 units from Winfield Estates coming off. Um, and you also did say that it can be a multi-year process in, to keep them on, but that it is easier to keep ones on that are already here than to add new ones. So then perhaps would it be in our best interest to decide to, since we have a decade, to start the process and keeping them on? Oh, absolutely. This is, it's certainly time to start thinking about it, about strategies, maybe reaching out to Amherst to Northampton to uh, see how the strategies they employed worked out for them. Um, you know, when you talk about affordable housing, the first thing that often comes to mind is something like Habitat for Humanity and we're building houses. And there's that that's fine, but that's not going to replace 80 affordable units. Uh, building building one, two, or three affordable units a year certainly will help, but um but we're really looking at a big hit on the horizon. And if we don't maintain the 80, correct? We'd like to, if we can maintain the 80, anything we can add is gravy. But taking so what a do we do tonight in regards to this, or is this just like kind of an informative? So the, this is informative. The planning board has been coming to the select board about every two or three years just to raise the issue. But this is the first time we've really had the numbers as clear as, as we have them now. And I've got to admit, uh, I did this spreadsheet on Sunday afternoon and yeah, you, the numbers are not sacred. They're, you know, they're, it, one source said there have only been 56 new dwelling units in the last 10 years. Um, I think that that's probably on the low side. We probably have a few more, but statistically it doesn't make a huge difference. Um, when we're talking about tens and twenties of units, that's not a big deal. When we're talking about 80, that's a big deal. So having all of this sort of pulled together and knowing that there are some issues, uh, some proposals out there, um, I believe that David Nixon at one point was, or in, at least intended to work with Mountain View to see about keeping units affordable. Um, I believe that as far as I can determine, there was never a uh, meeting of the minds on, on that. There still is a year for that to, uh, or not a year, nine months for that to work out. But um, the, the big thing is just what's on the horizon. And I think if we bring it to you now, um, your board and the successor board, and, and 
in all likelihood, there'll be a different planning board 10 years from now. Um, but we're, we're setting a marker here. Um, this is some, it's time to get, time to be thinking about what to do, reaching out, what people want to do. And um, so there's no action item for tonight, but there is um, uh, a warning that um, this needs to be addressed. So since it's a, a multi, it could potentially be a multi-year, um, you know, should the people decide that they want to try and keep Winfield on it's since the multi-year process, like what is an appropriate timeline to start with that? And then can you renew it year in advance or a couple of years in advance before it expires or what's that process? So I, I'm sure that it, so Winfield recently changed hands. There is a new owner um, and it would probably be useful to at least make contact with them and let them know that um, we, we're, we're looking at this and uh, perhaps start a conversation with them. Uh, I haven't had that conversation. You know, I don't have any authority to speak for the town in, in this respect, um, but it is something that uh, someone perhaps could reach out to them. Um, you know, in, in November, if after town meeting, it, 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 it's all fine, but um, it, it's time to start building some uh, contact or bridges here. I think I heard you say earlier that the select board could appoint uh, the town administrator to do this for us. That is certainly the last time this came up, uh, the select board at the time delegated it to David to look into, um, but that was, um, as he was on in his exit phase. So um, I, I, don't, I don't think it got too far at that point. Well, I think Mountain View coming off next year, we should focus on that instead of the 80 units because it still is a large number. So mm -hmm. um, does somebody want to make a motion to give Carolyn permission to work on that? Moved by Joyce. Second. Second by Randy. We have a vote. All those in favor? Is it Aye. only? only oh, I'm sorry. I'm oh, sorry. It's only you that can do it. So I would say at this point, yes, because <laughs> issues pending with Mountain View right now. So I would um, think this probably needs to be moved at this point. Okay. And are you okay with the addition to your plate? <laughs> He's got all of it. <laughs> <laughs> what did you say? He's got all of it. <laughs> <laughs> all right. All right. All, all those right. in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstaining? Congratulations, Carolyn. <laughs> Thank you, Bill. Thank you. Well put together, easily readable. I learned from Linda. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, is Laura Baker here? Laura Baker is here. Right. Laura, would you give us an update? And we have our town departments here in case they have any input or questions for you about the Econo Lodge conversion. Sure. Can y'all hear me? Yes. Great, thanks. Um, yeah, just one small correction to what uh, Bill was saying. We're actually proposing a total of 50 affordable restricted units uh, for the Econo Lodge property. And one unit that would not have an income restriction because it would be set aside for a resident manager. Um, so it would be a total of 50 units for your subsidized housing inventory. Um, I don't have any new uh, information about the Econo Lodge. We're just in the process of getting a cost estimate done for the construction work. I'm primarily here to see if there are any uh, questions or comments from the different department heads that might be lingering. Um, we did have a kind of a tech review meeting together with the department heads, and I've had phone conversations with fire uh streets and police um and haven't heard of any red flags so i guess i kind of am here at your here at your disposal to see if if there are questions <coughs> all right does the select board have any questions no i don't it's pretty everything 
Nothing uh, turned out. I was wondering if the chief had any comments on it at all. Mike and Mike, anything from you about the Connor Lodge? Not at this point, not until they get their review of uh, this part of the process. No, I would agree with that. <coughs> or, 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 um, and uh, I, don't, I don't think there's any any reason to believe that uh, we're not going to have an increase in call volume here just because all of the entire hotel was full uh, at that point. But I can't make any type of prediction as to what that looks like for the of us. I don't know if I can. Uh, but we are happy with whatever decision the board has. <coughs> Thank you. Has Mike, has uh, Tommy Quinlan, building commissioner, on board? Tom is on. Tommy, Tommy is on. Tom. Jim Mack is on. Dan is on. All right. Do any, anybody on. else? Let's start with Tommy. Tommy? Yes, we spoke about it with, with Laura, and um, I mean, it's going to have to all be done by a design professional. And, you know, it's presented to the building department. We can, we'll review it as well as the fire department. and. Um, Adjust everything according like that. Anybody else in the town departments? Planning board. Planning board? Bill or Jim? Are you pursuing a friendly 40B, Ms. Baker? Yes. Or what are you, or what are you going after? Yes. So we, for folks who are just coming in, we, we had talked about two potential zoning paths. One is called 40A, which is by right zoning for primarily educational uses. Uh, the planning board advised us uh, after talking with town council that they didn't think that was the best path for us. And so advised a friendly 40B, which is the 40B we've been talking about um, with an understanding that we have at least at the municipal level support for the project. Great. Thank you. Thanks. Any questions? Laura, I think you were asking <laughs> for some kind of acknowledgement from us that you could go ahead and pursue this path. Yeah, well, our next step under the 40B process is to request what's called a site eligibility letter from a state financing agency. It just says, basically, it's a viable type of project. It's not an approval for the project, um, but it is a threshold for us putting in a permit application to the Zoning Board of Appeals. The state is very much happier if it comes in with a letter of support from the select board or the chief elected official as our weight um, so that they know at least the town is familiar with the project. Once that uh, application is submitted, they send back a letter to the town with a 30 day comment period. Um, so you have that uh, time to comment if you did have any particular things you wanted addressed as part of the project. Um, once we have that, we can begin a process with the Zoning Board of Appeals, which is essentially a site plan review. Um, we can, as Bill mentioned, ask for waivers from local zoning. In this case, the waiver would be related to a residential use in an industrial zone. That's the primary waiver we would be seeking. Um, but we wouldn't be changing much about the site itself. So I don't know that we'd be asking for very many waivers, but we would go through a negotiated process with the Zoning Board of Appeals who would be the body to permit uh, a project like this. Uh, we are looking at providing uh, affordability terms of 99 years or in perpetuity. And so the issue that you've been talking about tonight about properties that might cycle off of your um, subsidized housing inventory, you would at least have a very long time before you would encounter something like that. And I would just also comment that not only is the loss of affordable housing from an issue for 40B and the subsidized housing inventory, it's an issue for people living in that housing. And it's an issue for who can live in Hadley. So I think there are multiple reasons why you would try to save um, existing uh, subsidized and affordable housing in your town. So I remember, I believe an earlier conversation that we could request that a certain percentage of this be made available to Hadley residents first. So you can um, certainly make that request. The request would go from the town body, typically the select board, 
to the financing agency. You'd have to back it up with some data that says you think there's local need, which is, I'm sure there. Um, and then they could authorize that. It's a maximum of 70% of the units during the initial lottery and lease up of a property. Okay, well, I think because we're having a new legal firm start tomorrow, I would like to put this off until our next meeting for a vote. Is that all right with everybody? Our vote isn't actually going to determine whether or not you do it. You're moving forward anyway. You're just asking for us to essentially bless it. I would feel a whole lot more comfortable moving forward with concurrence from, from the Board of Selectmen. We, we always want to work in cooperation with the communities where we develop housing. Any other questions? All right, can we put on that the agenda for the 3rd of August? Thank you, Laura. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Is Chris Curtis here? Uh, Wayne Fiden is here. Is that for Valley Bike? Yeah. Um, I saw Wayne Fiden. I let Wayne Fiden in. And who's the other person? Chris sorry? Curtis. I don't see Chris Curtis, but I do see Wayne Fiden. Wayne here to talk about Valley Bike? I'm hoping. We could hire him. I hear you. He's smiling. He looks like he's ready for it. Okay, Wayne. So I don't, I, Chris Curtis had reached out to me to say you had put it on the agenda. I don't really have anything to report. So I don't know if the select board has new thoughts or ready to move forward on anything. Um, certainly available for questions. I don't have any new information since the last meeting. So one of the issues has been financing. And we told Chris uh, when he appeared last before us that we could not guarantee any money until fall town meeting, um, at which point the town would have the final say. In the interim, the finance committee has poked around and figured out that they could vote to add $4,500 to some town department still to be named. Um, and then see if the town meeting votes for that. If the town meeting does vote for that, then it's a yes. If it doesn't, then it's a no. So that's all we can say, you know? That, that's great. I mean, you know, I, that would certainly work for us if that works for you all. So I don't know if that means that you're willing to take the risk and if it does not pass a town meeting, then you have to eat that $4,500 or you hope it does pass and everybody's happy. With the yeah, I, get, I mean, so the other part of this is wherever this goes, Whole Foods or somewhere thereabouts, also has to come up with money for the concrete pad and electricity. And that's all going to take a few months anyway. So the timing for town meeting could be just fine. So I don't, I don't think we're taking a risk. I think we're waiting to see is is Whole Foods or one of the things in Mountain Farm Mall willing to cover those costs? And we'll probably hear from them about the same time we hear from the town meeting. All right. So I would like to put that on town meeting warrant, please, to transfer funds to a department to pay for the Valley Bike administrative costs. Was there a precedent in the past for using taxpayer money for private? Well, we do PVPA. Similar thing. That's partially funded with a grant, too. And so is this. So it's similar. Not as, not exactly the same, but. So, um, I, I, just to go back to what Claudia had mentioned um, about. Right. Mentioned yeah, I want to I wanna go talk right? to her. Yeah. Um, I can put a placeholder on the warrant. We just have to identify what might be Okay. Hey, Wayne, how hard are you pushing the businesses over there or, or, and how receptive are they being to this? Um, so Chris has taken the lead. So I don't really know what, what he's heard. You can, you can sort of guess. What he's heard is everybody absolutely loves this and everybody says it's above their pay grade and they're kicking off, kicking off the corporate ladder. So we know there's businesses who want to be there. 
but frankly, we don't know if their corporate parents are going to come up with the money or not. And it sounds like the on-site managers just don't have that authority. I think it would be hugely helpful if the businesses would kick in. And, and I will say we did reach out. So we asked, you know, if you're really interested, are you willing to write a letter of support to the select board, sort of a letter of commitment? And they at least asked us for a draft copy of what that letter would look like and what the easement they'd have to be granting would look like for doing it. So I know it's under serious consideration, but I, I would not begin to predict what that means. Any other questions? Thank you. Thank you for seeing this and showing up, Wayne. Thank you. Um, I think we've covered everything, except I need to make an announcement because at our last meeting, we talked about holding a public forum regarding the climate change. The Climate Change Committee has asked to withdraw the emergency declaration until after the public forum for input and also wait until after an educational session the Climate Change Committee is planning on sponsoring in September. At that time, the Climate Change Committee will update the declaration to reflect the town's position and resubmit it to the select board for consideration. Given all the news in the past few days about extreme temperatures, it's critical we have the discussion and hope that all town residents will attend. As soon as we get a date set, we will publicize it as best we can. I think there were a lot of questions that had come up with um, whether or not we actually have the authority to approve something like that, or if it's something that needs to be um, a referendum on the town ballot for voting, or if it's something that can be done at town meeting. There was- We can ask our new legal firm. Yeah, that, there was a lot of so my understanding questions for that. ballot for the fall, it's too late. Okay but what the appropriate avenue is, whether or not we actually have the authority yeah, for that. Let's check with legal. Mm -hmm. I've already got that on the list. Excellent, okay. Anything else? Yes. Anything else that I have? Oh, I'm sorry, Board the, of Health. Right, yeah. Missed that, okay. Uh, there will be an extension um, of the appointment of the Board of Health position until August 18th due to uh, inavailability of the Board of Health and Select Board to jointly meet to vote in a new person. Okay. Yeah. That's it. Any today. Randy, anything from you? Good, everyone lived. No, I'm week. all set. Thank you. <laughs> all right. Welcome. May I have a motion to adjourn? So moved. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Unanimous. Thank you all for coming.